くだらねえ100年生えんだよリュウジヤマザキ Is he a Yakuza boss? A member of the Haki Shu? Or just an insane wanted criminal that enjoys torturing and killing? Yamazaki was born in Okinawa, Japan. He had a very difficult childhood, like any orphan kid who had to grow up and survive alone in the streets. One day, he saw a well dressed Yakuza boss named Sorimachi. The sight of the man made a huge impact on little Yamazaki. And since then, his only dream was to be just like this classy man. Years have passed before Yamazaki left town and joined the world of the organized crime, and step by step, he ended up working under the man he admired since his youth, Sorimachi. The sharp eyes of the Yakuza boss saw the potential of Yamazaki and his monstrous strength, and so he made him his personal bodyguard. This was the happiest day in Yamazaki's life. Sorimachi noticed the incredible power of Yamazaki's dominant arm. He praised him for that and advised him to keep it in his pocket as a secret weapon and not use it unless he really had to. To this day, Yamazaki still follows this precious advice. But his perfect life will come to an end during one fateful day. He was ambushed with his boss by a rival gang. Sorimachi was tortured and brutally murdered in front of Yamazaki's eyes. Witnessing his father figure being killed with such savagery changed Yamazaki forever. At that moment, something broke in his mind. He lost all sanity he had, and the cruel, sadistic psycho that we all know was born. Shortly after, Yamazaki killed his superior and boss's rival, an act that is considered as a suicide among the Yakuza. Hunted down by the clan members, Yamazaki had no choice but to leave Japan and flee to Hong Kong. Once there, Yamazaki wasted no time and started his own business, continuing his criminal career as an influential broker, weapons dealer, and drug trader. After joining the Chinese Mafia, he was hired by the Jin brothers as a bodyguard. His mission consists mainly of protecting a mysterious artifact called the Scrolls of Immortality. His infamous brutal actions attracted more and more the local authorities to him, especially one police detective called Hon Fu, who was also a very skilled martial artist. And although he never succeeded to catch Yamazaki, his relentless attempt to arrest him forced the crime boss to leave the country and escape from the law. Yamazaki's involvement with the King of Fighters tournaments started officially in 97. Before that, participating in one of their editions did not interest him, though he enjoyed watching some matches while hiding among the crowd. One day, he was approached by Billy Kane, who invited him to join his team, composed of himself and a private detective named Blue Mary. Yamazaki refused at first, but then he accepted with the condition of being paid double the amount of the tournament's prize money. Billy was following the orders of his master, Gis Howard, a notorious crime lord who participated in KUF 96. Gis was there when Genitz, the leader of the Hakishu, attacked the winning team at the tournament's conclusion. He saw how, once defeated, Genitz activated the Riot of the Blood in Iori Yagami and witnessed with his own eyes how he went berserk and killed his teammates, Mature and Vice. Geese was intrigued by what he saw and wanted to know more about the Orochi blood and its effect on humans. If he can somehow use the power of Orochi for his own goals, that would make him the ultimate boss of South Than or even the entire world. He also knew that there was something odd about Yamazaki and suspected that he might be related to this Orochi in a way or another. The next year, Gis made his move. First, he ordered one of his followers to recruit Mary with the mission to join Billy's team and observe both Yamazaki and Iori during the tournament. Of course, she had no idea that she was actually working for Gis. 
Then he tasked Billy to recruit Yamazaki and keep an eye on both him and Iori. Billy and Mari had no idea that their crazy teammate was actually a member of the Hakishu and had pure Orochi blood flowing in his veins. At the end of the competition, the new faces team who turned out to be members of the Hakishu were awakened and embraced their identity as heavenly kings ready to live and die for their master Orochi. But Yamazaki was different. Although he knew everything about his true nature, he had no intention to serve anyone or anything but his own interests. He was totally immune against Orochi's influences, for even the legendary being cannot mind control someone who already lost his mind. Yamazaki was here for the money and nothing more. He couldn't care less about resurrecting a demon that he was supposed to worship and serve. This was something that Billy should have known when he decided to not pay Yamazaki as agreed at the end of the competition, for nothing will stop him to come after and attack whoever owes him money, even if it's the fearsome crime lord Kiss Howard. Though their differences seem to have been peacefully solved at the end, because six years later, at the 2003 tournament, Billy once again invited Yamazaki to enter KOF with him and a martial artist named Gato. This time, Billy was assigned to keep an eye on both of his teammates, especially Gato, since his father could be tracking Giz. The end of the competition showed, however, that neither Yamazaki or Billy have forgotten what happened at the end of the 97th tournament and still hold grudges against each other and so they engaged into a fight with an unknown outcome. Yamazaki is a very unpredictable man. Sometimes he is calm and confident, almost looks like a respectable gentleman. The second later, he's totally nuts, yells and curses while laughing hysterically. He is a pure brawler and fights like an enraged animal. He doesn't follow any martial discipline. In fact, he hates martial arts. That's why destroying dojos is one of his hobbies. That and collecting knives that he always uses during his fights, except in Kiwa 14, which is a shame. Yamazaki never fights fair, in addition of backstabbing people, literally. He doesn't hesitate to use other dirty tricks, like kicking sand on the opponent's eyes. He uses his superhuman strength to empower his street fighting techniques, as is the case with his headbutts that create small explosions when executed. But his signature move is his iconic snake arms. Yamazaki can move his arms so fast that it increases their range, allowing him to hit his enemy from distance, almost as if he's using a whip. With such incredible speed, his arms become barely visible. He can also absorb energy projectiles thrown by his opponent and use it to empower himself. But that's not all. Thanks to his Hakisho nature, he can also choose to infuse the said projectile with his own blood and send it back to his attacker. Most of these techniques are performed while his dominant arm is still in his pocket. But when he chooses to finally use it, it's when things get real ugly. However, all these powers do not compare with his most precious asset, that is his natural insanity. While other strong characters are so weak against Orochi's control, Yamazaki's insanity grants him total immunity against it. And because of that, he even believes he's better than the rest of the Hakishu. He considers the Heavenly Kings pathetic, and whenever he encounters them, he just laughs hysterically at their faces. While the Hakishu members are dead by now, Yamazaki managed to outlive them all, living the life that suits him, and so far, seems to be doing very well. As well as a crazy sadistic psycho could be. I hope you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up if you did, and why not consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.